Hello, I'm Megan Schiller from KDKA TV News, and this is your KDKA News Now update. I've got your top headlines and the latest weather. Tonight, we're learning new details about the deadly shooting of a bar owner in Westmoreland County. The man accused of killing the owner of Mogi's Bar in Laurelboro went before a judge today. Erica Stanish reports. Yeah, testimony today revealing that Nathan Salem may have shot bar owner David McGill, believing he was a drug dealing pedophile. But prosecutors argued there's no evidence to support that, and this case now moves forward to trial. It's sad for everybody. It's sad for the McGill family, a good family. He was loved by his community. It's very sad. It's sad for the Salem family, okay? Their son's in jeopardy now. An emotional day as family members of David McGill crowded into the courtroom for a hearing against their loved one's accused shooter. Suspect Nathan Salem had nothing to say this morning until he was asked if he had any remorse while walking out of court. He's accused of shooting and killing David McGill on December 21st outside of Mogi's Bar in Lower Burrell. Testimony Wednesday revealing a possible motive, alleging Salem pulled the trigger because he thought McGill was a drug dealing pedophile. We ask his attorneys for more details on the allegations. We're not going to discuss any of that. Uh, everything will be resolved in court, not out here in the parking lot. All charges against Salem, including first degree murder and criminal homicide, have now been held for court, with his formal arraignment now scheduled for March 20th, where his attorneys say they hope to resolve this. First step in the criminal process, we got as much information as we could today concerning protecting our client as best we can. We had no discovery. At some point in time, we'll get discovery. We'll be in a better position to know what we're going to do. Now, McGill's family did not want to talk on camera today after that hearing, but his daughter did send me this statement saying anyone who knows my father knows that he was a great man with a bleeding heart. The proof is in the support from the community. I hope that those who are supporting Nathan Salem rot in hell and get what they deserve alongside with him. The family went on to call Salem's comments today ignorant and offensive. Reporting in Westmoreland County, Erica Stanish, KDKA TV News. A Pittsburgh public school student is charged with assaulting four teachers. Mamie Ba explains what happened. A Pittsburgh public student is facing four counts of assault for allegedly fighting four teachers. And when it takes three or four staff members to intervene and they are all still hurt, that really says a lot. Investigators say it happened inside of Oliver Citywide Academy Satellite School at Greenway Middle School. The charges against 18-year-old Kavon Rempert Leonard were just filed Tuesday. According to this criminal complaint, Rempert Leonard was on the phone talking about fentanyl and coke. The documents allege that when he was asked to get off the phone, he grabbed that teacher and threw them across the room. It goes on to say the 18-year-old demanded his phone be returned to him. In doing so, he started kicking the cabinet it was locked in. That's when witnesses say he punched another educator, wrestled that person to the ground, and choked them. School staff tell investigators once his phone was returned, he punched the teacher who returned it in the mouth, then left. Once outside the building, that's when staff said he swung on yet another educator. I reached out to Pittsburgh Public. A spokesperson said, we are unable to discuss this incident in light of pending charges. Dr. Ken Trump, a school safety expert, tells me the incident is concerning. We're seeing an uptick in verbal and physical aggression as students came back from the pandemic and with the upcoming cut of federal funds for social, emotional, mental health supports for kids, we anticipate that that violence, which is not going away, is actually going to unfortunately get worse. It's unclear whether the student was suspended for this alleged incident. Reporting in Crafton Heights, Mimi Ba, KDKA TV News. And now here's First Alert Meteorologist Ray Patlin with a look at your weather for the week ahead. Now, one thing, when you step outside, you're going to notice that it is cold. We have wind chills. This is what it feels like factoring in the winds in the 20s in most cases. And I say most cases because it feels like 19 in Franklin, but it feels way warmer in Morgantown, where the wind chill or what it feels like is 40 there. We have temperatures around that are right now in the upper 20s. Uh, look into Franklin, look into uh, spots like Clarion and Dubois, uh, mid 30s, actual temperatures, not accounting for the winds. So it's a chilly night across the region, and we're going to see a warm up. We have this, this uh, bump of warmer air. 
that is going to be pushing in. And when you have a jet stream or temperatures on a map that go like this, usually you can count on some sort of system there. So look in this area where we go uh, from the mid 50s to the lower 30s and you'll see that we have some snow up that way. So those kinks in the jet uh, in the jet stream, we call them troughs, which are the dips and uh, ridges, which are the, the high parts, but usually at the front of the trough, you get one of those areas of precipitation. So this is what we're gonna be watching for moving towards us, mainly in the form of rain when we get into tomorrow because the colder part of this system is gonna be up to the north. So watch how this works in. We have clouds increasing tonight. Uh, those will be around for tomorrow morning and that's the afternoon where we see some rain and this is not looking like an all day rain type event. You're going to see these showers cutting through. This is a snapshot of 1 p.m. Broken up showers starting to hedge into Elwood City, Newcastle, Mercer up there and then quickly swinging through the region and by about six o'clock most of this rain is off to the east, but we're going to have that colder air and the winds starting to take over that could set up some lake effect to the north that won't last too long because uh, we're going to be watching another system change up those winds a little bit, and that's going to push some snow from the south our way Friday night into early Saturday. But most of this snow is going to favor the ridges in areas east again. We're, we're having a real hard time getting the snow to want to come to, to Pittsburgh, but uh, the ridges look to be getting more of that once we get Friday night into the weekend. But tonight we're looking at increasing clouds. Temperatures are going to be chilly, mid-20s. And overall, the winds are going to be light here. They're going to kick right back up tomorrow. So we're going to get some gusty winds, 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts, not out of the, the question. Highs near 50 with that rain during the afternoon and maybe a few snowflakes trying to mix in uh, for the evening. Come Friday, that's uh, especially Friday night into Saturday. That's probably the best shot to see some snow showers nearby. But as I showed you on future cast, that's going to sort of favor the ridges in areas to the east. Once we get through those early flakes Saturday, we're going to spread some sunshine. That is how we start next week. And you can see after that little dip in the temperatures, we get a bump. We're looking at the mid to upper 40s Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday.